Yeah. Hey. <laughs> hey, Spencer. On, Yo, oh. buddy. How are you doing today? Doing good, man. Doing good. Sunny outside in California. How's it Beautiful. going over in Colorado? Oh, it's good. It's sunny. I haven't really gone outside, but it's sunny. Yeah. <laughs> been, been, been hard at work all day, but all that good, sunshine. To, good, good to get a little get a little break from the work to jump on with you and, uh, and have a yeah. fun discussion. Yeah. I'm, I'm really excited for today's topic, as I am with every topic. <laughs> Charles is very excitable. I don't know if anybody else has noticed. This one especially, though, because I know that a lot of people are questioning the value of lower mint numbers now that VV Comics has dropped, and you can get a mint number as low as 11. And we're going to dive deep into that, our thoughts and, you know, potential ideas for the future plans of uh, how you should approach this. But first, whoa, is that a newsletter, Spencer? Whoa. Do we have one of those? I do, think we have we, a newsletter. <laughs> do we write that? Yeah. Look at that. Everyone out there, make sure to get involved in our newsletter. It's a bi-weekly newsletter. We have awesome blogs with special guests. We cover different topics around crypto, NFTs, and physical collectibles. We talk about big sales and digital and physical collectibles. We cover it all. It's a lot yeah. of fun. A lot of we'll fun. That, we talk about upcoming that link right there. as well. Compsandcrypto.io slash newsletter. Yeah. Hit that link. All you got to do is go to our brand new website. Booyah. Look at that. It's, it's not that brand new anymore. It's been like six months. But <laughs> I'm going to stay for another six months. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> big shout out to SnapThink for collaborating on this. And and SnapThink is, is run by the one and only Brendan Cherry. So big mm -hmm. shout out to Brendan and his team for helping us put this together, including the newsletters. It's been a lot of fun collaborating with him. And all you have to do is just go to our website, go to the top right corner, newsletter, type in your email, and boom, you're in. We also do exclusive giveaways as well. Yes, yes, we do. This newsletter. Very cool. Yes, we should be should be having an exclusive giveaway coming up for this next one. So make yeah. sure you get yourself on the newsletter. All, all you have to do to, to sign up for the giveaway is just be on the newsletter. It's that easy. That's it. And you're so. automatically eligible to enter. So get involved. It's fun. It's a lot of fun. It's we really, really, it's really fun because we love the topics that we choose. We're really passionate about the topics mm -hmm. that we choose for our newsletters. Yeah. So we yeah. definitely and we, get and we get some some really great uh, guest writers occasionally for our blog, like Sergio, Sergio Collects. He's he's gonna be uh gonna be doing our next blog for us. So we're, we're excited yeah, about that. Definitely. Yeah. yeah, Market Smart Chris Evers, big shout out to Chris as well. He's an amazing writer, and uh, mm -hmm. both of them are. And it's we are we feel blessed Thank to have you, Chris. Well. Speaking of Chris, yeah. There he is. Oh, Where, that's yeah. awesome! Yeah. Ho hopefully, he makes it in soon. I know this. Uh, this discussion is is just just right for him. <laughs> and what's going on, Slider? How's it going, man? What's up, Slider? And we've all just we'll, we'll we'll get into all of this. You know, we'll, we'll we're gonna. This is the discussion for today. So, yeah, yeah. We'll we'll, we'll get into it. Oh, Boom! That. that is a that is an intense graphic created by Kevin. Oh boy! <laughs> oh no! Where are all the low mints going? <laughs> Where are they going? <laughs> Yeah, so, so definitely excited to talk about this topic today. But first, I want to do a big congratulations to my collectibles. He is officially yeah. the new VV community manager, very deservingly so. The guy has produced amazing content over the past year to two years, and he's so consistent. I don't yeah. know how he does it. He's amazing. I don't either. <laughs> he's always covering every single drop with VV, and mm -hmm. it's quality content. And yeah. I'm so yeah, excited for him. He's the right guy for, him. for sure. 100%. I, he just knows the community so well. He understands the space, and he's just a, a, just a quality guy and uh, creates, ama creates amazing content. So huge congratulations to Michael Collectibles. So excited to see what you and the VV team are going to uh, cook up over the next, you know, yeah, yeah over the next year especially. Really exciting things have come out and continue to come out. So it's going to be a lot of fun. So low mint numbers. Yeah. Yeah. So going back to our low mints dead on VB. So we do know on on VB comics, each new modern comic has a thousand total editions. And the lowest mint number you can get is 11. So there's a lot of concern from people in the community that the mint numbers that the, the collectibles have already dropped on VB, like, will, will they will it hurt the value of those collectibles because those are higher, right? So yeah. people, their mindset is going to be a little different. We don't think so, because really, at the end of the day, it comes down to availability, right, and accessibility. What mints are available that you can purchase? So that's some, something important to think about, and we'll dive deeper into that specific point later. Um, but right now, actually, I want to focus on some recent sales that have happened since VV Comics has dropped. So these are some sales that have happened afterwards, and it's interesting. These are just a couple examples. 
Do you see this red circle logo that that was airdropped to um, people who were staking on the app? Is that the right terminology? Staking? I don't think it's the right terminology. Yeah. Uh, or it's like it's like sauce staking, I guess. It's not like technically staking, yeah. but yeah. But here's a good example. I mint number eighty three. I think there's 11,000 total editions, you know, sold for $115. The floor at the time was $8. These numbers might change now since I've created this graph. So I apologize for that, but it's 14 X the floor. Yeah. And it doesn't seem like a ton of money, but like it still is a huge, huge premium, like 14 X above what people are paying at the floor. So obviously Definitely. people are, are really valuing these things. Definitely. Here's the Wolverine collectible number 43, nine X the floor sold for $1,142. And the floor is, is around 120 now, which we've seen a pretty nice bump since recently. Mm -hmm. I think some people have kind of been coming in and sweeping the floors, and deser deservingly so. This is a really cool collectible. Totally. Yeah. Is, yeah, is number 41, cool. is, that, is that the lowest for this one available? And, yeah, number 41 is the lowest. Yeah, we'll yeah. Get, to that, get to that soon, actually. And here we go. So the first public available mint is 41. And this one sold for $3,100. And the floor is 17. So it's 182x the floor. For the first mint available to the public, number 41. Interesting. So people are still putting tremendous value on the lower mint numbers that are available. Mm -hmm. I'm curious though, over time, that the, how they're going to communicate this information to new users. Because that yeah. is kind of confusing. I do know I do appreciate that, like on the on their articles and the blog articles that they say first public mint available. So I do hope that there's ways of really kind of understanding that a bit clearer for new users. But mm -hmm. Again, I mean, these are great examples for collectibles for lower mint numbers that aren't affected. And these these happened after the uh, the VV Comics launch, mm -hmm. and same with comics. So, what kind of comic sales has there been? Here's how the duck. This is 158, which is the first available mint number to the public. Sold for 58 dollars, and the floor is two dollars. So, 29 X. There you go. People stood putting tremendous value in lower mints. Jurina missed. Oh, that's not right. <laughs> this is Darth Vader number <laughs> one. I said, oh. right. Ah, oh, dang it. <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever. Uh, well, it's supposed it was, to be a, it was another example. <laughs> it's supposed to be an image of Journey to Mystery 83. Um, the common, <laughs> not Darth Vader. <laughs> Apologize for that. Uh, so imagine that Darth Vader image is Journey to Mystery 83, the first appearance of Thor. Uh, it's sold for 130 and the floor is currently $30. It's 4X the floor. And that's a 296 mint, which I think the first public mint is under 200, I believe. I think it's like 180 something, one, around 180, I believe. Mm -hmm. So for us specifically, you know, we've always felt that the more total additions of a collectible equals more valuable lower mints. So if there's only 100 mint, 100 additions of in a collection, Having a number 50 or a number 40 isn't as valuable as it would be having, you know, a number of 1,000 total editions or even 50,000 total editions. Mm -hmm. And because, because our mindset, we always think about percentages, you know, these, the value ultimately for these collectibles, aside from the rarity, lies into the number. So it's really the value is always about numbers. Yeah. It's the only way to differentiate value for these collectibles. They are, they're 100% identical. And the only difference that you get between them, at least between the rarities, is, is just the mint number. That, that's the only thing you have to differentiate. And, uh, and as we know, collectors, you know, like to find new ways to collect, to differentiate. That's like, that, that's kind of very, very important in our market. So, um, yeah, I think it's, it's a no brainer that people are going to be continuing to look at these things. Right. Definitely. And here's an example. You know, number 11 out of 1000 editions. It's in the top 1%, 0.011% specifically. Mm -hmm. But out of 60,000 editions, mint number 501 is actually a lower you know, percentage compared to mm -hmm. a number 11. So does that make it more valuable? I think collectors will decide on that. I mean, obviously, it also depends on the comic itself. Yeah, but the popularity of the comic is definitely very significant definitely. as well. It's like, but this is a really yeah. interesting, interesting discussion. And you know, this kind of puts things in perspective, too. Yeah, no, I, uh, I, questions out there, by the way, feel free to ask anytime. Oh, yeah. Let me see. I forgot to look. Let me see if there's any questions here. Oh, we love Sergio. Yeah. What up? What up, oh, Randy? Randy? How's it going, Nobody. Randy? Nobody. Yeah. Let's see. All 
Oh, and we got Chris Evers back. <laughs> <laughs> right What's on, up, Chris. Yeah, it's yeah. it's such an interesting perspective because you know a lot of the modern comics that have dropped is only a, a thousand editions for every single comic. Um, but yeah, again, it comes down to the scarcity of the total editions. So the value lies across the entire collection because it's so scarce. I mean, a great example, a great example is X Men ninety seven. If that was dropped with five thousand total editions, I don't think it would be anywhere close to what it's worth right now with only 1,000 total editions. And with the popularity of the show, we're seeing a massive increase in value for the NFT compared to the physical comic. I mean, the physical comic, you can go and buy a, 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 you can buy a copy for $5 off your local comic shop, you know? But the very, but the, the comic right now on Vivi has only 1,000 total editions. And the floor, I, the last time I checked, was on $50 or $60 for a comic, which is pretty remarkable. And the uncommon yeah. is around the same. And, the ultra rare, I think, is somewhere between fifty to hundred. I don't don't quote me on the numbers, but I know that the secret rare is hovering around a thousand, which is amazing. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Yeah, I, um, and, and we've talked about this before, but I mean, I think it was honestly genius the way that that VB set up the the minting system with having the mints spread across the different rarities rather than having you know like a one to a thousand and a one to six hundred, you know, for each rarity or whatever. I, I think you know it, it creates opportunities in the market for lower rarity collectibles to still be really really valuable and, and be highly valuable by collectors um just because look, they're able to have that low mint number um yeah yeah definitely yeah and what's interesting too is that these modern comics you know they're since they are limited to a thousand and i presume it'll probably stay this way for probably forever they'll probably release potentially even more scarce editions over time that's very, very possible. Possibly even one of ones. I mean, who knows? Anything's possible at this point. Yeah. But what's really interesting is that since there's only a thousand total editions for these modern comics, you're, you're it's going to limit the opportunity for special mints, like publishing mint years. Yeah. So those could potentially those be publishing more valuable. Mint years don't even yeah won't even exist in some of these collections. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That's interesting, right? That's really interesting. That being said, also at the same time, you know, who knows when the next ultimate fault for comic could be released, you know, a comic that could grow in popularity and value over time. And who knows, we could potentially see, and I, I totally believe it. We'll see an FA character. I know people are speculating on spider boy right now. Mm -hmm. um, that comic, the FA for that comic was released on VV with like 5,000 editions, I think, but, but the Spider-Man one or spider boy one, the first of his series was released on VV comics with only a thousand editions. And that thing's flying pretty high too. Like the secret rare is hovering on a thousand too, which is remarkable. Yeah, really remarkable. Yeah, higher than some of really, really, really key book secret rares that maybe have higher editions, but like books yeah. that are way, way more significant. Their secret rares yeah. are going for a few hundred, you know. And it's, you know, it's and I, and I think part of it is the scarcity. I think I think a lot of people put a lot of consideration to that. But the question is, long term, how much will that matter? You know, yeah. you know, popularity. Obviously, I think at least I, I believe will will win out in the long term. You know, it's like. Uh, a hit monkey you know we'll go back to that you know just because right. it's low edition size it, it's not a popular book so it's right. people aren't gonna it's not gonna have long-standing value you know there, there might be some initial hype or something like that around it but long term yeah. it's not gonna not gonna have the same value that you know an asm one or uh fantastic four number one or like any of these books well yeah because in the end of the day these are digital counterparts and i'm curious what the value of these like modern comics will do over time too i'm definitely gonna keep an eye on the market but since they're you know, some of them only have, most of them only have 40 SRs, like 40, I think. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Yeah. Crazy scares. Yeah. So I think it could, they could do pretty well as long as the popularity remains and people aren't trying to like liquidate them over time. Uh, it'll be interesting to see. It'll be interesting to see. And, and that kind of pegs the question, you know, some of these moderns, are they potentially better opportunities in terms of investment? And again, this is not financial advice ever on this channel. This is just our Never. opinions. <laughs> Never. <laughs> But could you could they potentially see more upside compared to some of these Grail NFTs that have more additions? Who knows? I, know. I think I only, mean, we, only time will tell. Yeah. Only time will tell. Yeah, we don't have an answer. This for market, that. this market is still so new. Yeah, it's so yeah, exactly. Um, but but I, but I, I think that you know in general the strategy of of going for books that are valuable in the real world. I mean, I, I don't think you can really go long go wrong with that strategy, and yeah, and especially thinking long term, it's like yeah, some of these books have sixty thousand additions, but like speaking long long term of like you know we believe that there's eventually gonna be millions of users on bb but there's still not enough editions for everybody to have one so 
uh, yeah. inevitably, I, I think, you know, there's enough popularity with those books and uh, enough like physical collectors actually value them and understand the value of them that I, I think long term, those are probably be the ones that are going to stand the test of time. Um, and, and I think some of these some of these modern, really scarce books could do well, too. But I'm, I just don't have as much confidence there just because it's I don't know, we, we don't have a proven market around it yet. It's it's really tough because th we've been saying this since the very beginning, since VV started dropping comics. You've got to be careful because. We fully expect every Marvel comic to be released in NFT format, mm -hmm. old and new, especially yeah. new moving forward. We know that now. I mean, now they're sure. all new. Yeah, they're all going to Now they're all yeah. new, but but they're going to be probably releasing every other comic over time as well. Mm -hmm. So you've got to really think about which comics are going to stand the test of time. I mean, for all really? this, the, the reasons that Spencer mentioned, you know, it's very important. That's why we saw this happen. In the beginning, when only like five to ten comics were dropped on VB, like people are paying five thousand dollars for a comic that mm -hmm. was only worth about hundred bu hundred bucks as nine eight in real life, and and we've seen that comic come down significantly over time since then, and I don't think it has a chance to rebound. So we've seen that too, right? So a lot of people have paid tremendous value on a lot of comics, and you got to think about which ones have an opportunity to bounce back. And I think a lot of the modern ones that first released like a year and a half, two years ago, they probably won't ever reach their all time highs again. It's just the uh, yeah, unfortunate I, I truth. Think, yeah. But a lot of the grails and big keys, yeah. I think they have definitely have a chance not just to hit their all-time highs, but potentially even go higher. It's very, mm -hmm. very possible. But I am excited to see you know, what the next ultimate Fallout 4 comic is, the Edge of Spider-Verse 2 comic, which one's the next big modern comic that could potentially be released on Vivi that's only a thousand editions. That's bananas to think about. Mm -hmm. So definitely keep your, you know, keep your eyes and ears out there for you know fa characters speculation against yeah, speculation is also risk yeah yeah this, I know there this is risk. Yeah. yeah there is risk i mean even this this whole space is still a risk right now mm -hmm. um but when you connect the dots it does definitely make sense it definitely yeah. makes sense for us but th thankfully though i mean if you're if you're buying these these contemporary modern comics you know at you know on on vv comics at you know very cheap price you're not you're not risking a whole lot to see if maybe one of these first appearance characters pans out long term you know, I think the more of the trouble is like when you're chasing those characters, like for speculation, you know, it's like, oh, this character might be in a movie and whatever. The book's now spiking to $100 and then you buy it. And then, you know, a week later, it's down to $2 because, you know, the, the news ended up not turning out that that character is in the movie, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And we even saw that with like Avengers 8, right? The speculation mm -hmm. of King coming in and there's been a lot yeah. of hiccups with that totally. character, unfortunately. Yeah. Given, yeah. given the situation with the casting. actor and <laughs> yeah. casting, but it's still a valuable comic. It's mm -hmm. still a valuable comic that people will probably really? still, definitely still put value on physical format because that character has tremendous value in Marvel comics. Um, in terms of the MCU, I don't know what their plans are for that character moving forward, but that being said, it's still a very valuable comic, mm -hmm. you know, 50,000 plus dollar comic in its highest grade. Yeah. You know, so yeah, very interesting to, very interesting to, uh, to talk about this stuff. And, and think about, you know, and especially for modern comics, you know, you definitely want to think about what's, you know, in terms of what you have to, to invest or collect, you know, everything costs money, whether you're investing or collecting, everything costs money. So you just got to really think about what it is you're buying and why you want to buy it. If you're buying it for fun, you love it. That's awesome. That's mm -hmm. great. But if you're trying to think about things as an investment, it's really important to think about this stuff moving forward because you just want to make sure what you're buying into has potential value uh, and upside you know, and will retain its value even mm -hmm. during a bear run like we're in right now. Yep. Absolutely. So we, we got a couple questions here that I feel like yeah. we could jump into here. So from Lucati, um, how do you feel about lowest public mint uh, for rarity? Um, so like kind of like the lowest public mint that's, that's available. So yeah. yeah, VV exclusive ultra rares. I I'm a, I'm a fan of the, I'm especially low mints in general, but like if you can get the lowest public mint for sure. I mean, we've, we've got a couple, like we have like an ASM 300, I think, like ultra rare. That's like one of the lowest public, if if not the lowest. We're we're pretty close. Um, yeah. So so, a, is he referring to mint numbers or for variants? Uh, no. So so for like the lowest public mint number for a specific variant. So it's like the oh, lowest okay. public mint number for a rare, or the lowest pit public mint number for an ultra rare, or for yeah. a secret rare. Yeah. That's that's definitely an interesting conversation because I think if I mean. Yeah, if you have a, the first public mint that's like a, a secret rare. And we do know that Marvel Spotlight number five. Because <laughs> Spencer and I bought 215, but we didn't, you know, we were like, oh, that's a good chance of being the first public mint. And it wasn't. Yep. There was a 201, but went on auction and sold for over $10,000. Yep. And I remember that. <laughs> yeah, I remember that happening. 
that kind of stung a little bit. But you know, I'll, still, day, I'll still take second lowest. That's still oh good. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. great. That's great. But it's it's yeah. I mean, that's very interesting to think about. And usually, I mean, some people do like prefer commons. It's really interesting too, like for publishing mint numbers. And we've been doing a lot of research lately, and people mm -hmm. are collecting these and the value that they've been buying them for. And a lot of those collectors prefer the commons, the original covers for the publishing mint number. Although mm -hmm. there have been some that have been secret rares, there have been some that are like ultra rares and, and rares as well. But I think the commons and probably secret rares probably have the most premium because secret rares, I mean, have tremendous value because of their scarcity. But then you add that with additional value, like a publishing mint year or 616, things like that. I think yep. it's really interesting. Yeah. So you really can't lose. I mean, it's, I think ultimately it's still going to have a lot of value because it's still part of a collection of that comic and the mint number itself will do very well. Mm -hmm. It's been fun, but also a big shout out to the entire community for giving us information, being so vocal about sales and reaching yeah, out totally. to us and being giving us the opportunity to publish these sales because that's mm -hmm. the biggest thing we want to, we want to educate people on what numbers are selling and how much they're selling for. I'm really excited for VB to eventually release the data of sales Hopefully it's coming soon oh, yeah i hope so it. too we man, need because, it <laughs> yeah it's really going to help the growth of the community as as investors you know they'll mm -hmm. understand things because i i've said this many times but spencer you and i both agree we, we wouldn't have anywhere close to the knowledge we have now if it wasn't for like go collect or gp analysis mm -hmm. being able to track past sales and no know you need that it's, it's, it's the only way you can be like a, a really educated investor and, and really know yeah. what you're doing and and feel confident about the moves you're making. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Especially if you, you know, for special mint numbers, like, you know, like one, two, three, or like six, one, six, for example, or even 1977, which sells mm -hmm. well for every single star Wars collectible, a comic or collectible. It, they all do well with 1977. Yeah. I think that's the universally next to six, one, six, the most like well-known number right. uh, that everybody loves. So, yeah, and it, that having the opportunity to actually track the sales and see what they're selling for gives you a better perspective of what these things are worth and the value of what you have. So you, yeah, you, so you don't accidentally better, overpay for something. Yeah. You, you don't overpay or you undersell. Or undersell, sure. Or yeah, undersell. Exactly. Totally. Yeah. You, you might not yeah. realize that what you have is something that's really valuable and you know it might be this weird obscure mint number, but there's one collector out there that just loves the number 1961. And all he collects is 1961. And you go track that past sales history and you can see that he pays a ton for that number on every single collectible out there. And yeah. there you go. Now, now you yeah. now you know to 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 not not get undercut. Exactly. Exactly. So yeah, these are all important things to think about. Very very excited for for past sales and sales data to be released mm -hmm. on VV and and also the opportunity for for making offers. I know we keep talking about this, we're probably gonna yeah. keep talking about this until it happens. Yeah, until it happens. But, yeah. but people own things and you have to like go in the marketplace and spend a tremendous amount of time trying to find something when mm -hmm. you can just, you know, for imagine a drop happens, it sells out. You can just go on, on, on the VV app or on the, on the desktop. You can search for the mint number, find out who owns it and make an offer. That's mm -hmm. awesome. But that's yeah. going to change the game. I really, I really believe that and tie that with Omni NFT, man, who knows, who knows yeah. where this stuff can go. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I think it's just going to make things a lot easier for everyone. I mean, and, and I think like going back to the day, having like the past sales data and, you know, all that kind of stuff. It's like if institutions want to get involved, if hedge funds want to get involved and, you know, invest in these things like assets, and, you know, we know, how, at, you know, private equity firms and hedge funds, they're, they're buying, you know, multi-million dollar comic books. And, you know, they, they, they really value this collectible market. And, you know, I think it's only a matter of time before they start looking at the, the digital collectible market as well. And, yeah. you know, it's, those guys, all they do is data. Like they, they don't, they don't make a decision if they don't have a model that says that, yes, this is going to be a profitable thing for us. So right now there's, there's no way for them to, to really do that. And, and really like with, with certainty be able to do that. So, and I think once that data is available then hopefully we get some, some bigger money involved. Yeah, definitely. All those, all those when all those pieces finally come to fruition, it's, I think the result is going to be very eye opening, mm -hmm. very eye opening. Yeah. It's very exciting. And yes, Chris Severs, I totally agree. Make sure to hit that like button <laughs> and make sure to subscribe to our channel. We have great content. Yeah. Uh, and oh, uh, yeah. And I really appreciate that. It's really nice. Of you, Randy. Oh, thank Big you, shout Randy. To Randy. Uh, thanks, buddy. <laughs> That's awesome. Can we talk, <laughs> talk signatures since PSA fired the Pokemon guy? Maybe can help. Huh? Do, do you know what's going on with this? I actually don't. And I'm not sure what happened there uh, that PSA fired the Pokemon guy. Um, Randy, if you do want to elaborate, 
happy to discuss that topic. But I, I mean, totally. again, that's another thing. Digital signatures. My gosh. I mean, it's, that's going to mm -hmm. be a really big deal. People are going to be very motivated to go to Comic-Con events, in your life events, potentially even being able to send your NFT, you know, across the world to get signed using MCP points. You mm -hmm. know, that's a really cool idea. I'm sure you'd probably still have to pay for the signature, but just get an opportunity to have to have your NFT signed without traveling anywhere. I yeah. mean, that's that's amazing. I mean, I like have, have it actually be validated on the blockchain and provable and, and all that. Yeah. Like I had, I had to travel to Los Angeles to meet Jim Lee at a Comic Con event, Torpedo Con, and he cost I think around three hundred dollars for a signature, and I waited four and a half hours in line to meet him. Four and a half hours, guys, <laughs> not including travel costs. So, if VB ever has an opportunity to, to you know, use an MCP to have to have people you or have an opportunity to have their NFTs signed. Um, just by the comfort of your own home. That's awesome. I mean, it's always great to go in person and meet the artist in person, but yeah, it's, it's a so lot nice of people, them, but yeah, it is. Yeah. But a lot of people don't have that luxury, unfortunately, <laughs> and around the world. So yeah. yeah, that's a really cool way to opening things up for everyone. Totally. Um, got a question here from Manny. So do you think that the VB vault not reflecting or factoring in low mint uh, hurts? Um, that's an interesting one. I, I don't think that there's enough infrastructure in place to be able to actually do this yet. But yeah, I mean, I, I look at my vault value and I'm like, that's not right. Because like I have a ton of low and special mint numbers. And totally. I'm just like, this is just like not reflected. Like it should be, you know, much higher than this. So yeah, I mean, it definitely makes it a little tough to, to estimate. But I think until we actually have the sales data out there and can like start like assigning like fair market values to certain mint numbers or certain like, bands of mint numbers you know like a sub five percent or a sub ten percent or sub twenty percent you know I, I think once we can kind of stratify it into those kind of uh you know just like kind of like the way that like go collect does it you know and, and besides fair market values for different different grades um you know finding different ways to separate separate out the collectibles by mint number and then uh you know potentially we could do that but i think we need the sales data um and then we actually need people making sales and you know buying things you know that that creates more sales data so uh, yeah, yeah. I think I think we're still a little a little ways off, but um, it would be incredible if we could if we get this at some point. Yeah, that would be really cool. Yeah, and I think I think it all just it comes back to I think this is important, I, and it's a really good point, Manny. But I do think that having sales data and having a way to showcase this, you know, these the value of these low mint numbers will just will help tremendously. And if there's a way that Vivi can tie that into their the vault and help determine value, that's awesome. That's awesome. I mean, go like you said, Go Collect is a great example of that. Mm -hmm. They based off sales, off you know, depending on the grade of the comic, um, and they just track the sales data because you know using eBay, Heritage Auction, Golden Auctions, Comic Connect, they use all those resources for public sales. There's a lot mm -hmm. of private sales that happen too that aren't reflected on the website. But that being said, there's a lot of data um, that that's that's pr public as well. So very excited yeah. to see that happen on VB because I really do think that's going to be a game changer because right now people are just, you know, it's 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 kind of like it's it's all happening behind the curtains and it's not really public. So that's why, again, I want to emphasize how much I appreciate everybody. If a big sale happens with your special mint number or just a big sale in mm -hmm. general, sending that to us, showing this proof of transaction, being able to identify it and post it and share with the community mm -hmm. has been really awesome. It's been really, really awesome. So good. Thank you for everyone for doing that. And make sure to uh, to hit us up if you have a, if you know about a sale or if there's any sales that have happened. Hit us up. Mm -hmm. Totally. Uh, I think sure. we have, have another question. That? Yeah. Have, yeah. Have you seen Go Collect tweeting about DB? I haven't seen that. They have. They have in the past. I mean, in yeah. the past. I recently. I'm. It was like way back, like when digital comics were like first released. At least. Yeah. That, that's when I remember because we were kind of collaborating with them a little bit back then. But right. Yeah. So do uh, you think they ultimately have a digital comic section with the sales and take into account mint numbers? I think so. I mean it's very possible. I mean, whether it's on GoCollect or, or VB's own platform. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's very possible. Very possible. Yeah. And I hope I it it's possible. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. I mean, I, I would like to see just like a little bit selfishly, I'd like to see like a community project, I think. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, kind of kind of take over and and be the leaders in this, like rather than than go collect. Um yeah. you know, I mean they're just very entrenched in the physical space and um, I think it is cool to have everything in one place, but um, I don't know. I just there's a lot of a lot of hardworking people in the community that have been building platforms like this, and would yeah. love to see one of those succeed. Yeah, definitely. 
Yeah, because it's tough, right? And again, going back to what we were saying earlier, you know, seeing a number like one, 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 you know, you have that in your vault and you got it on the drop. Like, what do I sell it for? You, mm -hmm. It's hard to say like what people would buy for it. You know, the best thing that people do right now is they post for a, a number that they think is reasonable or what they want to sell it for. And and maybe they'll put their own information, like their own Twitter account or their profile or something, and hopefully mm -hmm. somebody will hit them up. But yeah. it's tough. It's really tough uh, for that reason. So that's why, again, going back to making offers is going to be a big deal. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Let me see. What do we got here? We got Prez in the house. Prez, Prez. what's up, bud? Let me see. So publishing years are one of ones. Totally agree. Um, mm -hmm. Low editions. I wish Vivi would release a lot more of it. Save one for the Vivi verse. Gotcha. So, so like not not hold as many editions back, basically, um, from mm. from the public. Yeah. yeah, agreed. It would be uh, it would be nice. I, I would like to see more of those in the in the world. I mean, I, I get why they do it, and I know they have agreements with with licensors and all that. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I think I think most of these low editions will find their way into the public at some point. Um, but it's just going to be through giveaways or through the licensors, you know, deciding to sell them or. Uh, you know things like that. So, um, yeah, yeah. We kind of talked about like the lowest, lowest available mint number, like forty-one. Or, you know, people have definitely gotten burned in the past because some of those those lower ones have gotten gotten released. And so, yeah, I would definitely caution people when they're they're going for the lowest publicly available mint number because chances are the lower ones are gonna make their way into the public at some point. Right. And yeah. and that being said, I, I I do agree with you. You know, you got to be careful. You put tremendous value on the first public mint. Um, but that being said, I think even lower mint numbers will sell at a higher premium. So there you go, yep. right? Like if you have a bunch of nine, if you have a, a nine, eight comic, it's a one of one, then a nine, nine pops up. Does that hurt the nine, eight potentially, but at the same time, the nine, nine will sell for a very, very high premium True. and could potentially raise the ceiling up, making the nine, eight even more valuable. It's super possible. Like it's another perspective to look at it, but time will tell. I mean, I, we do know that that Marvel did it. They did do a, a giveaway that involved uh, giving out low edition numbers, like mm -hmm. vaulted numbers, right? Is that correct? I think it was like a hundred and something so. for, for some yeah. of the Grail comics. Mm -hmm. We saw some of those released. Uh, and, you know, I, I don't know what those were so, have sold for or if they have sold at all, but it's interesting to think about. And again, having that data, understanding this stuff is, is so valuable. It's so valuable. Yeah, totally. Yeah. All right. All right, then. <laughs> great chat i really appreciate everybody joining us today this has been a lot of fun again make sure to get involved in our newsletter get involved in the newsletter guys for up-to-date information yeah. on physical and digital collectibles blogs uh upcoming auctions we have it all yeah for, we have it all it's very exciting stuff and you know one of the topics actually we're gonna have in our next newsletter it's really exciting is the uh, tmnt the lost ronin is going to be turned into a live action film which is mm -hmm. going to be a lot of fun. And it's going to be a rated R turtle so film. For that. That's yeah. insane. That's insane. Yeah. So thank you again, everybody, for joining. Really appreciate you. And we will see you all in the next one.